Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen, Guile here and welcome back to the Forged Alliance Forever promotional series. I hope you are all happy, fine and dandy on this sad rainy grey day that it is over here in Britain. Personally, I'm not. And I'm not because, uh, nothing to do with the weather, I've realised that that little mishap I had a few months ago, you know that thing where uh, I, I cast a game and I waited three months and I cast it again and forgot about it. Uh, that's really affected me and I know it has because today's game it's going to be a ladder match pro level and uh, I'd already seen it I'd seen it once it had been submitted by one person uh, or I'd found it in the replay vault one of the two and I'd watched it and for some reason I went eh, no, I don't want to cast it and then it got submitted again by someone else and I watched it again and today I've gone yeah yeah I think I have now I know I've watched it before but it's got me freaked out and I must have che checked my video lists like, I don't know, 10 times looking to make sure I haven't, like it's so familiar. I'm just like, I, please, I can't do it twice. I can't do that to the sub base again. So I don't think it has and I'm, I'm pretty sure I can say with like 98% certainty, but you know it's that thing where you leave a room and you're like, did I turn the light off or did I turn the stove off or... I don't know, did I put a nappy on my baby this morning? Well, you can't all relate to that, but that, that's a very real thing in my life. Uh, it's that level of fear. So if in the tiny 2% chance that I've cast this game, I kind of just apologize in advance, but I'm pretty sure I haven't, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be worthwhile to watch. So please stick around just on the... Uh... <laughs> oh, chance that you haven't already seen it. Uh, it said it's going to be a ladder match, and it's going to take place on arguably my least favourite map of all time. That's right, you guys who know me well know it best as Point of Reach version 4. I'm ready, you guys are ready, and the players are sure as hell ready. So let's go on over to the game zone and see how these guys are going to get on. Chang ka -ching. There, it's just so ugly. It's so uniform and, and islandy and just generally not cool. Anyway, let's take a look at our players. Oh, and it's a ladder match as well, so we have to pay lip service to all of you build thieves out there who like to steal other people's ideas and pass them off as your own there we go you can see our two players here on the blue corner up at the top it's none other than the god king xerxes himself hopefully looking to perform better than he did against the greeks uh, or more specifically the spartans because the athenians didn't do much did they they made a wonderful mess of things What's his face says in the film? Anyway, there he is. He's going cyber and bless him. He's made a bit of a mess of things there. Opening first land and uh, shoving that down next to a mass extractor in the bunch of core mass for the adjacency bonus there. And in the red corner, down at the bottom, we have Morax. And uh, I clicked on the wrong thing there. Where is it? There we go. Sitting down here at the bottom, he's going Seraphim, and he's also opening first land. I'm just checking to see. Is he actually, he's, I can't quite tell whether he's blocked that or not. I don't think he has, so he hasn't gone for the adjacency bonus. I didn't see the little adjoining two hickey there that you can see much more clearly and defined in Cyber in turns than it is in Seraphim anyway. So uh, he hasn't gone for exactly the same setup there. Both once getting the land factory online. Uh, actually, yeah, no, sorry. Land Factory, one P-Gen for both of them. Morax uh, choosing to put him his down next to the top right mass extractor, whereas uh, Xerxes choosing to link it to the Land Factory. And then both of these guys tripping off down here next to the Hydro and planning an air factory next to that. Incidentally, a lot of you uh, newer players or people getting started in fat might be wondering why the air factory always goes next to uh, either a hydro or specifically other associated power it's because planes take a lot of power to build much more so than land units so you want to give them as much assistance as possible on the adjacency side and uh, three p gens up and running there for xerxes morax went for four and has already started work on the air factory so a little bit <laughs> he's moved it Xerxes didn't like the time that he was losing thanks to the placement of his engineers sitting inside that footprint. So he built it over here. No adjacency bonus on these T1 P gens, but he's not going to be too worried about it. First plane out for the game, and it's from Morax. Scout plane, 
as you would expect that uh, I was going to say heading north with great gusto but it's actually really not it's meandering its way up over there and uh, already a large bill queue for Morax look at that all the way over there all of the uh, mass extractors on the southern tip of this side island here queued up as well as a naval yard at the other end of the uh, map over there transport away up top there for Xerxes and we're just loading up a transport of engineers there for Morax as well more or less departing at the same time but of course Morax getting an early read on Intel on what's going on in Xerxes base with that scout plane not really very much in it in terms of the transport Xerxes going to touch down uh, multiple drops planned for that single transport different locations one here in amongst the core mass on that top left island and then at the nine o'clock position another one at the core mass over there and another one on the other fringe of that island as well there for Xerxes Morax dropping two off on the core mass on the bottom right island, two off by the Hydro as well, then throwing down another air factory next to that, and then he's going to head on up to the top and drop two off next to the Hydro over there. Very power-heavy build, it seems, from Morax in the early game, and would you look at all of those naval yards there from Xerxes. That's an awful lot of Cybrin horribleness, isn't it? Sea-based Cybrin misery queued up next to Xerxes Island. First little engagement kicking off over here. We could probably go back to full screen now. Are they going to get the transport? Yes, they do, but the last engineer touches down, so no major loss there from Xerxes. We can live with the loss of a transport, but as long as we keep the engineers safe, our ecos can continue to toodle along and tech up nicely. Bomber out there from Morax heading up towards the top left though. That can sometimes be a problem if you're going to lose your early engineers to a bit of T1 bomber pressure. It's going to slide past the viewable map area from those Inties though. So Xerxes not going to be able to spot that before it's probably too late. However, we have a land factory up and running so he won't worry too much if he does lose those engineers. In fact, that bomber kind of tailing off. I don't know where he's going with that. Hard to tell. Those Inties from Xerxes making contact over the top of Morax's base. Another transport laden with engineers in that base as well. Looks like he might be waiting to shoo away that last Inti before he takes off. And he's not going to manage it with that. That interceptor for Xerxes still alive. But the transport is away. And where is it heading? Well, going for the... Uh, interesting enough, paying a little bit of attention to the mass extractors in the center. I would say it's interesting. But uh, obviously those two pretty hard to keep control of. Due to the inevitable naval engagements that will kick off in the center of the map. And that T1 bomber came to nothing. Shot down there by some sky slammers in that nine o'clock position those other ngs being dropped off those uh, islands will then or the transport with the other ngs i should say will then move across to uh, help the three o'clock position which is already up and running one land factory online two more on the way and a pd as well so making sure he doesn't lose out to any early ground spam i don't think he's likely to have anything coming his way but uh, you never know because when that's all you can see it's like what's lingering over here I haven't scouted you never can be too sure still I think uh, T1 anti-air is always a fair bet to go for first in those situations but these guys would know better than me that their impressive ladder ranking of 1717 and 1814 respectively Morax having a change of heart and what he was building there reclaiming some of these Redundant T1 P gens as well. Give us a moment to talk about Eco. 75 for Xerxes versus 61 for Morax. So uh, Morax lagging behind a little bit in the early game. He's also behind on power as well. 
120 power as it stands. And of course that instantly changes as soon as I said it. The curse of the commentator comes into play. Xerxes traversing out with his ACU now to that top left island. Cool mass at T2, all except one. Lots of air factories now being thrown down in Xerxes' base. Lots of air factories and lots of naval yards as well. So you compare that to what's going on for Morax. Morax has only got two naval yards up and running and none others planned. Even the one, actually, well, that's planned. That's still there. That engineer about to complete that last mechs before going on to build it but as far as I can tell excuse for the excessive zooming in and out we've got the three excuse me naval yards down here the one planned over there and that uh, contrasts very starkly with this whether or not all of those gets built it remains to be seen but that's a lot of potential frigates spam or sub spam that could be thrown out by our cyber player in the early stages, I think we can afford to add a little bit of tempo. All these guys continue to get set up, and a little column of Zooies sent forward to harass this island initially and then recalled. And uh, that might be because Morax is gearing up for some drop plays here, and that one already loaded up and ready to go, heading towards the top of the screen. Potentially, I would imagine coming in for an attack on Morax's main base. Seraphim Frigate scores a mass extractor kill in that northwest island. Interceptors engage over the top of Xerxes' base. Looks relatively even. Xerxes might have a slight advantage in numbers. Let's just take a look at air factory figures so we're up to t2 air at the main factory for morax and he's got two more air factories in there another one over here and that's mostly it it would seem we've got four soon to be five or three soon to be five i should say no sorry what i'm talking about we have got four soon to be six air factories in the main base for Xerxes. So Xerxes investing a lot more in mass production and he can afford to. He's got a significant mass lead now. 1, 2, 3 versus 93 there. Xerxes comfortably ahead in terms of eco and production but this might slow him down a little bit. Successful Zui drop into the back by Morax. In come three jesters. It won't take them to lop off, long to lop off the heads of those Zooies, what did they accomplish? Well, very little. Three T1 P gens. Xerxes will be happy with that. And now that column of Zooies continues once again, heading straight up through that little corner island on towards other vulnerable positions up here at the top. Morax power locked, it would seem, producing just 56, 57 mass with his power issues. He needs to get those sorted out. He is a long way behind now. Queuing up a T2 P gen and uh, another one on the way. As soon as that completes, his power issues should be over. Uh, big boy transports as well. Another one under construction. So potentially some significant drop plays on the way. We've already got one T2 transport loaded up with Zooies. More Zooies queuing. No, sorry, two. I am way behind the curve here. Another one inbound and another one under construction down here. So this is a significant investment right here by Morax into a drop. He needs to make this payoff. He is well behind 138 to 127 to 117 at current reading. He's caught up a little. But uh, this uh, would frighten me a lot. There is a lot of naval production power 
admittedly virtually all of it's T1. In fact, has he got any T2s? Yes, he does up here. And they are producing Salem's, those naughty, naughty, walkie, walkie destroyers that we dislike so much here at Guilecast. that drop coming as those massive fleets of frigates head south there from Xerxes. More Zooies loading up into the transports over there. And uh, there were a few more naval yards thrown up in the middle actually, but they are not going to last very long at all against such significant numbers. Let's take a quick look at the numbers of frigates we're talking about here. There are 62 frigates on the map for Xerxes. That's pretty insane. But the Zooies are away. Interceptors lingering in the center there for Morax, trying to make sure he can run screen for these transports. What Xerxes intel like? Well, it's not great. Those transports still undetected. You can't blame him for that at 16 minutes. He's not going to have significant intel coverage you wouldn't imagine over the top of that line of naval yards they come there are interceptors moving in now from Xerxes will they kill off any transports that would have been the easy one to grab no all of the Zooies make landfall and then commence immediate destruction of Xerxes air factories look at the carnage as those Zooie shells rain down on that Cybran base that's a thing of beauty right there one explosion after another. Morax tearing through Xerxes' base. Three, four. Air factories down. Five, six. Xerxes is nearby with his commander. Needs to get in there and lob some overcharges. Whilst, of course, staying as mobile as possible to avoid all of that return fire from the Zooies. Xerxes now severely power locked, as you would expect, having lost 90% of his power generation capacity. There goes another T2. And the rest of these T2 mexes down here, of which all except this R, are now under threat. Xerxes likely to be wiped out economically speaking at the end of this. He can't produce any more land units to counter this Zui spam. So that will be the end of that. Meanwhile though, that huge flotilla of frigates has pushed south and is now engaging Morax's base. Xerxes, it's worth noting, has gone from about 130 odd mass down to 40 that's not representative of his actual eco of course he's having power issues as we've already stated those frigates moving in engaging the naval yards at the back of Morax's base Morax trying to counter with Volthu gunships it's going to take them a long time to chew through all of those ships though they're focusing in on the high profile targets like the destroyers before moving on to the frigates it's worth saying of course that he does have some of his own vessels and he's got three or four destroyers in that mix as well. But there are just so many frigates down here for Xerxes. It's likely Xerxes now to assert full naval control on the area. If there is one silver lining for Morax, it's that, of course, the range on those frigates pretty piss poor. Most of the base will be safe now that he's taken out those Salem's. I'm not sure there are any T2 vessels left in this mix. I don't think so. I think it's all made up of frigates now. And the same goes for the next reinforcing band up here. One T2 mech still online in that main base for Xerxes. The Zooies come back to the main area after having destroyed everything on the southern tip of that top island. Xerxes just standing there absorbing Zui fire. What are you doing? Finally, he gets on the move. Had me worried there. One too many facial piercings. I was worried he'd pierced something neurologically important. But no, he got on the move after losing pretty much 
60% of his health. But finally, his main island is clear. And he can attempt to rebuild if he can suppress Morax enough. But there's good chance of that. Morax now forced to defend directly with his commander. He's got the T2 engineering suite and gun upgrade on there. So, not your basic comp. In comes another drop, significantly smaller now, it has to be said, for Morax. Drops them off right next to a T2 Mex. One volley away. Takes it down to about 33% of its health. Down it will go, but there are small patrols up here of Mantis for Xerxes. And no doubt he'll be increasing his ground presence on his other islands after that engagement. In fact, there has been another successful drop that with everything that's gone on, we've missed. And all of the core mass has been taken out. But nonetheless, Xerxes still doing pretty well. He's readdressed his power issues and he's still putting out 75 mass per tick. Compare that to Morax, who is now, it's fair to say, in the lead at 118. That's still not too bad considering what just went down and Morax now has taken some fire he's down to around 4,000 hit points gets himself back in under shield coverage over here and immediately starts work on some T2 PD that will be able to zap some of these frigates that are close to the coastline here that T2 shield relatively new I believe gone up in response no doubt to this naval incursion More T2 PVs going up behind. Morax now firmly in defensive mode here. Feels he's done enough to earn himself some breathing room. He can spend some time on trying to assert himself around his coastline. Needs to spend more time as well, though, on... Staying ahead of his opponent, who undoubtedly, of course, you would expect at this point in time to be hoovering up the mass in his main base and trying to re-establish himself. This is one of those maps where there's such a large abundance of mass spread out all over the place that uh, you've really got to keep the pressure on after such a maneuver as Morax pulled a moment ago on that main base. It's not difficult for your opponent to re-establish themselves. And he's all he's doing is getting power online at the moment. He's not trying to go into any mass air factory construction. All of his eco is still being funneled into fleet production. I do like that play. I have to it has to be said. It's all about keeping Morax pinned down. Mostly frigate production but we're starting to see the odd cruiser on the field now Salem production as well still happening from that one T2 HQ at the top there taking a quick look at the extractor spread so in terms of T1 mexes we've got 27 there for Xerxes in terms of T2 we've got seven spread out across here compare that to Morax he's got 21 T1s and 10 T2s that really needs to work on continuing to develop. Of course, it's very difficult when all of the coastlines are so threatened by all of this naval power. And before, admittedly, most of this, or all of this, once the first couple of frigates, sorry, destroyers, were taken out, all the rest of it has been frigate power. And so the central sections of these islands have remained safe frigates unable to reach sensitive structures but now we're seeing more and more T2 vessels piling up in Xerxes fleet and you can see the result mass extractors that were previously inaccessible now well within reach and that advantage is slipping away now. 112 to 99. Morax trying to exert some pressure via the air this time. Volthu's being brought to bear 
at the nine o'clock position. Coming straight over here to the corner. Surely want to go after some of these T2 Mexes. <coughs> Excuse me. Although lots and lots of Sky Slammers being produced from these land factories now makes it hard, even with T2 weaponry. And in fact, Morax withdraws the T1 Inties to defend the torpedo bombers circling over the top of this fleet going after the destroyers not focusing on one single target though that's a little bit of a mistake as far as i'm concerned and gunships just stationary up here doing nothing morax's attention elsewhere New naval yards under construction up here. Morax very concerned by the naval situation. And I don't blame him. The problem is, is, I think he's too far behind in it now. This is one of those scenarios he might be ahead on mass, but... The layout of the chess pieces is such that... I'm not sure he's going to be able to claw his way back. Xerxes continuing to apply the pressure... Fulthus heading north, picking off what they can, but they're about to run into an enormous air wing of interceptors. We'll swap those down without any major difficulty. There they go. What are we actually looking at in terms of air numbers here? So Morax has 90 interceptors. Xerxes on 44, so he does have a significant advantage. He can't seem to get the numbers of gunships together and coordinate that in attack. Any way to make it really sting. And Xerxes is now ahead again, 117 to 114. So that's a fantastic recovery from someone who, when that drop happened initially, did appear was potentially down and out of this game. Xerxes claws his way back. And now Morax finds himself fully on the defensive. I say finds himself now. Technically he has always been on the defensive. Fighting in this area around his main island trying to stave off this relentless naval pressure. Now he's using using Yenzines so hover tanks to try and augment his forces in such a way as to give him a bit of advantage and Xerxes is at least being routed out of this section <coughs> trouble is there's another long line of vessels coming down towards the main base down here another drop from Morax this time unsuccessful as it flies over those naval units Transport laden with artillery doesn't make its destination. What are we up to now in terms of frigate numbers? 114 frigates on the field there for Morax. Six something destroyers. I think that's seven. And one cruiser. Compare that to the composition of Morax's naval force as well. 52 Yenzines, and they're being produced out of all areas of the map now, here and here and here. Versus 25 frigates and 5 destroyers. But I just don't like the way this is going for Morax now. I really don't. 28 minutes gone. while stunning that drop was and he did I was going to say he needed to take this island out as well but he did essentially he took the core mass out here and he had another little drop down here which didn't work out it's an amazing comeback from Xerxes who had key mexes in key places just enough eco to keep himself alive and importantly he had accrued enough 
T1 naval spam to tie up Morax long enough to get re-established. And now, once again, he's in the lead. Has to be said, only by nine mass. But the makeup of the units on the field make this look daunting. I say some of these Yentines could be ferried about the map from some of these transports into different locations. Morax piling them in the center, though, to try and rebuke Xerxes' vessels. Smaller numbers of higher tech vessels for Morax going up against, well, I was going to say mass T1 spam, but it's not. Look at those Salem's and the cruisers leading the charge. Yenzine's getting in amongst those Salem's and taking down the Siren. He'll be happy about that. There goes another destroyer. Oh, 42 hit points left on that Salem. But really, the numbers of red in here just crumbling now. managing to pick off the important units but there's just so many frigates all the time reappearing still at 16 T1 naval yards for Xerxes that corner fleet that's just been holding a position in the bottom right now coming back towards the main base once again of Morax Again, just lacking the punching power to finish this here and now. This little maneuver has helped prompt this withdrawal to defend down here, which will allow more time for Xerxes to consolidate in the middle. Interesting, he hasn't made a move out over here. He must be aware of these naval yards. Well, he's not, hasn't seen them as yet. So aware of the danger coming from down here, but not aware of the production facilities in the east. Really, you feel if Morax loses either of these, it's going to be too difficult for him to contend with this constant spam with Yenzine power alone. You have T3 air power now for Morax in the main base. But at only 134 mass and 2.2k power, he's not going to be able to indulge himself in any mass T3 air production anytime soon. Be able to squeak out a strap bomber at some point and go on a mass sniping run. Hundred and sixty one now to a hundred and thirty eight. Actually, in totals, there's not too much between these two guys. Remember, of course, Xerxes, a lot of that is reclaim that doesn't really count because that's his own reclaim from scooping up his old base that's been torn apart by that early drop. So really, in total mass over the course of the game, Morax has not been that far behind. But that is going to increase that gap now, it would seem, the longer this continues. Thirty-two minutes gone. We can afford to add a little bit more to the tempo once again. And Xerxes drifting east now. Does that mean that he's spied? Well, he spied the boats and now he's spied the naval yards. That could be the end of those. He doesn't need those reinforcements in the center. They've got more than enough units there. 
little group down here going after the western shipyards as well. Morax dispatches some to defend potentially and the thing's nah, I haven't got enough. All the time Morax being squeezed in different locations. Units in the east destroyed. There go the naval yards. Xerxes and happy about some of the guessing it's what TA for life would have called UI lag that he used to obsess about. Could have that wrong. That's the naval yard headquarters and the only one on the map with its demise be Morax's ability to produce any more destroyers and he can't believe it he cannot believe he's in this situation and that explains so much Morax thought after that wipeout of Xerxes base <coughs> he cannot believe how he's managed to get back in this and get ahead and the answer was in a way, he was never really behind. All of the mass that he did have, that he still managed to hold on to here and around here, was still being pummeled into that mass frigate production. It's not often that you can say a game was won almost exclusively on frigate power, but this is one of those games. Another drop of engineers in the center just desperately looking for mass, but they're going to get eviscerated by a small group of frigates waiting over there. And Morax must know he's doomed now. Torpedo bombers in the center for Morax. That won't be enough to turn the tide of this one. He started to try and work on getting another T2 naval yard online but frankly my dear what is the point surely comfortably beaten it's now 175 to 112 and that's the story really Morax only gained 15 mass at peak from the point where he destroyed Xerxes' base to his highest point of mass production in the game. And that was a space of about 20, 25 minutes. He was just not able to eco up when he needed to. Last three naval yards remain over there. And now the main base of uh, Morax likely to be pincered here by Xerxes forces who have been the bane of his existence having power issues as well torpedo bombers focusing on those destroyers Interestingly enough, so look, when I uh, tap the speed changer, the slider doesn't change in the Supreme Scoreboard. Interesting stuff. Azar, if you're watching, please correct. Unit cap reached for Xerxes at 1k versus 300. How apt. <laughs> Strap bomber produced and almost instantly shot down. Morax flabbergasted is the only expression at how Xerxes has managed to recover. <laughs> Asking if he had another T2 P Gen squirreled away somewhere. To be honest, I don't know if he did locked away on one of these islands. You will have to check the replays for yourself. 
if you're interested. Interceptors tangled, vastly outnumbered Morax here in the air now. Down goes the T3 and down goes the commander with a control K. Morax submits at 41 and a half minutes. Well played indeed. And he had an opening. He had an opening after that, but I just, I'm not sure I know any people who could have done better. That was superbly played by Xerxes. Very well done indeed. Commiserations, Morax. That was a beautiful drop up there to the main island, but I think you got a bit overconfident with how much it had achieved. And uh, really, it comes down to the nature of uh, the unit comp at the time. And of course, just the nature of the map. It's a very wide, spread out area. And Xerxes still had enough income from these two islands to get back in it. Hope you enjoyed it, guys. There's always more to come from me in the future. Don't forget, if you feel so inclined and are feeling charitable, why not support me on Patreon? Every donation helps by me and by extension the channel and the community. So thank you in advance for that. Until next time, though, guys, stay well. And stay safe. This is Guile, signing out.